Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to start a series where I'm going to compare five different uh, thermoelectric coolers and these five uh, different coolers have different performance so we will see how they behave and uh, what are the differences. So as you can see uh, there are several parts on my table so I'm going to explain you what is what. So first of all, let's start with this. Uh, instead of uh, using water cooling, as I did it in many of my previous videos, I'm going to use a CPU cooler. And this is like a really simple uh, heat sink uh, and heat pipe based uh, cooler. There is a nine centimeter fan in the middle right here which is blowing the air in this direction. And then uh, luckily this surface is just enough to accommodate a uh, patio cooler. So if I take one, then uh, this area in the middle is exactly four by four uh, centimeters. So this is very nice, but uh, it's just not enough to put this thing on it, of course. So I will use some uh, thermal grease. I have a lot of this, so I can probably use this for ages. But what I did uh, is that there were some metal parts here because of course this is for a uh, CPU. So you have some clamping uh, stuff here uh, to be able to fix it to motherboard. Uh, but I removed that and I printed my own clamping mechanism. So uh, this print is not the best, but it works. So this guy will go under this and then I will use these screws and then I made a nice uh, small uh, clamping mechanism and I uh, made some ceilings and uh, insulation with the some sort of uh, self adhesive foam. But what the trick is that uh, I don't know if it's visible but there is an edge inside this part and here there is an edge and here you can see the outline of the plastic. So what happens there is that uh, I can just clip this in. I have to bend it a little bit so it will like pop in. And uh, once it's in, the trick is that uh, this very small edge, what you can see between the two white uh, areas is uh, two millimeters high. So when uh, I attach the thermoelectric cooler to this thing, I only gra grab it or grip it by the cold side. That means that uh, when I clamp this thing uh, on top of the cooler, like you can see it here, uh, I don't touch the, the hot side of the cooler with this uh, clamping mechanism at all. So that's very good because uh, yeah, I just decrease a part of the heat transfer. So what we will have uh, here is the following. I just have to assemble this so I can show you. So this is in. So this will be under and then of course I apply some heat uh, uh, thermal grease. So this will be on and then uh, I will use some rubber bands to have this uh, plexiglass and uh, put it here just to make a sort of a chamber and of course uh, I will also use a thermocouple to measure the temperature of the uh, cold side of this uh, cooler and then uh, I will measure different things. So what we are going to measure is the following. So first of all uh, we know that there is a current which you can uh, run through these coolers uh, and you can achieve the minimum temperature with them and they mostly depend on the hot side temperature. So basically how efficiently you can call, uh, cool the hot side of these uh, coolers and uh, how much uh, heat is going to transfer to the cold side and so on. But here, uh, what we do is that we try to keep the, uh, the hot side as close as possible to the uh, room temperature. And we will monitor that temperature and we measure the I max, which in these uh, terms, it means that uh, we are measuring the maximum current where we can achieve the maximum cooling. 
because after a certain uh, amount of current, the Joule effect will overpower the Pattier effect, and therefore you will get warmer and warmer cold side if you keep increasing the current. So that's uh, one thing that we are measuring. So there will be some sort of a parabolic curve and we will measure where is the minimum of that. And I will measure all of these five things at their 50% uh, at their, their uh, rated current. So here we have five different uh, thermoelectric cooler. All of them are this TEC and this is 3 amperes, 6, 8, 10 and uh, 15 amperes. So we have these five different uh, stuff and uh, we will see how they work. So this will be measured uh, also at 1.5, 3, 4, 10 and 7.5 uh, amperes and we will see what is the minimum temperature on the on the cold side and of course there will be other uh, current values uh, measured so we need some several points to be able to measure this uh, parabolic curve where we can determine the I max or T uh, minimum so we will do that as well and then uh, I have another idea because a lot of uh, people are trying to make this into um, AC. So what we will do is we have this uh, CPU cooler down here and this will cool the hot side. But then I will use uh, sort of a similar stuff. This is not yet prepared for the job, but uh, this guy is quite similar to this. It will be attached to the cold side and I will see what's the um, let's say outlet temperature so how much I can cool down the uh, heatsink of this thing and uh, how much I can uh, cool the environment with this of course these two things will be in the same environment so of course if you would use this uh, as an AC in this kind of setup it would make no sense because you need to uh, bring the hot air somewhere away because if you keep uh, if you keep trying to cool the same room while these two things sitting next to each other that makes doesn't that doesn't make sense because uh, yeah it's just uh, one side is heating the air and the other side is cooling so at the end you end up with let's say zero but of course due to the losses at the end of the day you will be uh, you will have a warmer room than you would expect. So yeah, this will be the thing. And uh, so I will monitor the temperature on the other side. So somewhere inside, I will put a thermocouple. So that is basically direct contact with the hot side of this uh, thing. And of course, I will measure the cold side. So somewhere inside this chamber, there will be another thermocouple. I will just measure the room temperature. And then I will measure the uh, outlet temperature so sometimes I will put a thermocouple inside the these uh, fins and we'll see what's the temperature here as compared to this temperature you know, uh, the, uh, the hot side temperature and and of course by using this uh, other cooler uh, I will measure the temperature basically somewhere inside so I will see how how cold is the air which is getting uh, which is uh, getting out from that uh, cooler. And uh, just one more sentence about this. So in the middle, we have this fan uh, here and it's uh, pushing the air through that direction. So what I will do that uh, I removed uh, this thing from another cooler because uh, actually I have two of this. So I removed this uh, fan from the other uh, stuff and then I have it here so I will attach to this so I will just uh, push the air to this uh, thing in a more powerful way so this should be very close to the room temperature hopefully because I think this is this thing is rated to uh, 120 or 130 watts of uh, TDP 
and uh, I think with this uh, TEC 12715 we have somewhere somewhere around 130 140 watts so if we are running this on the full power which we will not because then uh, we will use the joule heating as well so this uh, should be on the limit of this uh, cooler we will see but uh, definitely with this guy for example three amperes let's say around 15 uh, volts that is like 45 to 50 watts uh, depends on the losses and uh, other stuff uh, that should be no uh, difficulty for this guy so so that's all basically so what I will uh, do is that uh, I will prepare these things and in the in the upcoming videos I will measure each of them with the same strategy so there will be like uh, five different videos so you can see videos for each uh, coolers and then uh, of course there will be a video with the conclusions and that is basically me summarizing the uh, details of this uh, experiment series and we will see what we can do with this kind of uh, setup by using an air cooling and uh, some very simple setup and uh, i will use a relatively powerful uh, power supply which means that i will never run out of uh, power so even uh, this will be no issue for me because the power supply that i'm using is 0 to 30 volts and 0 to 30 uh, sorry 0 to 20 amperes so 600 watts in total so i can easily uh, drive maybe two of these at the same time uh, without any issues so what i will do now is i prepare the first uh, victim which is the tec 12703 so this should be the weakest one at, as compared to the others because of course this has just uh, three amperes and uh, once i'm uh, finished with that i'm going to uh, start the test series and i will explain everything for each uh, stuff so see you there